I'm gonna make a quick video uh, using a tripod. I made another one for the three most frequent problems, but people are complaining. People are complaining about they, you know, that they can't see you or they can't hear me. So I'm gonna make one with a tripod, and hopefully it's a lot better. If not, I don't care. Make your own video. This is for professionals only, by the way. So don't touch it if you're not professional. All right, here we go. Alright, the first step is the flame sensor. So you turn the power off, which is there. Either the switch or you dis disconnect. You follow the power from the bottom of the boiler pull these off one of them is for the pump on this one one of them is for the boiler so the flame sensor igniter you could use you could use a Phillips head screwdriver also so this one here you can either, look how corroded that is. You see that? You can easily either clean that or clean it or replace it. So that's the first problem. Let me take the other one. Another big problem is here. There's a Phillips head, Phillips head here. Let me show you. See that Phillips head holding this right there. Take that off. We're gonna clean this with a wire brush. Or you can easily replace it. All you gotta do is take these two, these three wires off and put in the new one. It's pretty basic, especially if you're a professional or if you're uh, an apprentice. So this is clean. Sometimes they're so plugged that you, the, the inducer motor, which is right here, it can't plug in, it, it can't pull in air, fresh air, because this is, this would be covered. Um, so I'm gonna rinse it off and go get a wire brush quickly. Okay, rinsed it off. Next is this right here. Just grab it here, 
clean it with a wire brush, nice and simple. What happens is uh, when it's very corroded, uh, you won't have the spark from uh, one ground to one leg. Get the back of it. Well, th this is this is the flame sensor, and this is the uh, ignition. These two. Probably gonna come back and just pop a new one in. I have one uh, not too far from here. I'm just showing you guys what you could do if you're in the jam. Because they're not expensive and just might as well just pop a new one in while we're here. But a lot of times this will just fix your problem if you get in uh, the error code to it. A no ignition error code. There you go. That's it. Nice and polished. Now you're gonna have current going through the flame rod and proving the flame. Because the, the flame uh, turns uh, the heat energy into electrical. Causes a current ionization. So you just pop it back in here. You see this? You see this yellow? You see this sight glass here? That's a bad sign of uh, of cross contamination, but or bad combustion. So I gotta check that out. In this case, it's pulling in from inside, which is not a great idea. Look, fresh air from the inside here, but we have a we have a conventional hot water heater as backup. So as long as it'll be a lot safer if you don't run the hot water heater in here. If not, it can cause backdraft of the exhaust. So then I'm just going to show you how to put these two back. Don't make sure you don't force anything in because the thing is porcelain or oh, ceramic it feels like I mean sorry and then you could just crack it or something Ugh. it's very annoying sometimes There it is. You gotta have it nice and tight. You don't force it in. And always make sure the power's off. If you get zapped by that one, by that 120 from the igniter, it's not gonna feel good. Then this bracket. Then this. This just slides, look, slides right in up there. Hopefully you guys saw how it slid in, but you gotta get it all the way in. If not, it's gonna pop, it's gonna fall out of there. Look. It's a little tight sometimes, especially with one hand. What I'm trying to show you guys. There it is. So it has like a little lip. It's like a little lip there that slides it that slides into. That's it. So then you grab your screw. Flip side, keep track of your screws, which one goes where, because 
If these Navians there, you'll get lost. You'll lose them or you'll miss. You put screws where they're not supposed to go. Different screws. So those are the two biggest problems there. Now, let's come down here. I'm gonna shorten this bad boy up here. Let's see. That little guy right there. Right here, it's a bad angle. This puppy right here. Let me go up a little bit. Right there. Shit. Try not. A little tight there. I think right there you can see it's hard to place it. See that? You see that there? There's two holes there. Goes in right like this. You gotta match up the holes. So then that I already cleaned it, but this usually has a whole bunch of gunk. You clean it out, you wash it, you put it back in, and then you just line these two up here. There's one on the far side, which I'm not gonna be able to get. And then just pop it back in. That usually causes a backup, and then it backs up, and then the exhaust, it gives you an error code for like exhaust. And all of that is connected to this drain trap here. You can even uh, you can even put this pull this out. You can pull this out and flush it if you want. And then whoever installed this, just uh, this acid neutralizer. They just uh, they just for the for the drain. They just pop that in there, which is not gonna work. I gotta. I gotta redo that. That's why it's been here. That's why the customer had a bucket down here. Catching the water. So that's it guys. So hopefully I don't get any more whiners that they can't see or they don't they don't they don't know what I'm talking about or they can't hear me. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like. Uh Next, I'm going to maybe make a video on how to change this, which is pretty easy. Pretty common sense. Limestone. All right, thanks, guys.